Hi. <sighs> Today I've got a hard finish at mm, quarter to three because of course I double booked myself but we will I, I'm confident that we will be able to get through this um, I'm not going to finish my piece like I said yesterday uh, with a, a pretty backing um, because honestly I didn't grab any material um, to to use on the back of it but that's okay I'll explain how to do it I'm just gonna bring up my chat <laughs> and yeah as usual I'm gonna wait until five past before I get started it's properly started today is gonna be an easy day I, I this is a, an easy beginner piece in, in my opinion um, So yeah, I I wouldn't stress about today. Um, we're going to be doing the little ball at the bottom, uh, the, the little ball of yarn. I mean, um, I did squirt mine with water last night, and that was because I was trying to have it photo ready for this afternoon. Um, I'm just going to do some touching up. I got my water eraser pen that I talked about on Monday and I'm just erasing some lines that I missed. So I would suggest you do this once you're all done, but for the sake of making it look pretty while I'm stitching it, um, I'm just doing this now. Plus we're waiting for another two minutes before I get started. That looks better. Oh, I'm sorry if you can hear my stomach. Apparently I'm really hungry today. I just want to keep eating today. So my my squirting water actually made it an interesting little ball. It's like a warped little ball now. If you were watching me watching yesterday, you, you'll be able to tell how warped it is. And sorry that it's um, the video is flipped. When I put my cam my phone up there, it'll flip back, and you'll be able to actually read that this says relax. It's just because I've got it on front facing so that um, I've got it on the right position so that you can see me. Um, yeah, it, it's back to front. Anyway, one more minute and I'll get this ready. So if you are doing two colours or more, like I did with my second piece where I've got the green through the middle. Um, whatever color is at the very top of your scarf is the color that we, we should have done for this um, strand as well as what we're gonna be doing for the ball here. So just make sure that you, you keep those colors all the same, whatever colors you do decide to, to pick. And I'm gonna have to Put my piece off to an angle so that I can actually stitch the ball itself. But anyway, let's get started. I'm going to quickly turn off the the room light. I'll be one sec. That's better. Okay. needle 
was hiding. So for this, um, if you can't tell, I will be blunt and upfront. I did actually restitch this after I streamed yesterday. Like I said, I might. Um, this little strand here, I did it as six threads yesterday on stream and it looked really gross. So it was a do as I say, not as I do situation. And as soon as I closed off the stream, I undid the whole thing and redid it. And it was much quicker because I already had all the little piercings of holes of where I should go. Anyway, I'm just threading my needle off camera. So this yarn ball is going to be a whipped stitch. Um, and that's what kind of gives it its like ball of yarn look. It did take me a while to figure out what stitch to make this and I didn't do a very good circle on this piece, I will admit. Um, hopefully I can make it look a lot nicer on uh, this work. Um, but yeah, basically we're going to start with the... Uh, the, like the lowest level so we want to have this bit and this bit poking through first and then we're going to work on this direction and then we're going to work on the top direction so to do a whip stitch we're going to start first we're going to just do a regular little stitch because we have oh i didn't tie knot Anyway, we're going to do this, these little bits in just a couple of seed stitches because they're tiny. Alright, I've just done a knot now. <laughs> I'm not going to fail. Okay. So, we do have our line here. I'll just redraw this so it's not a bit less confusing. Where's my pen gone? So, the line, it's not actually wobbly like this. I'll erase that. It's like magic. The line actually goes like around. Whoops, why did that happen? Like that. And then this one goes up here. Hopefully that makes more sense. Okay. So we do have this line to indicate where this row of thread should go, but we want to come kind of above it a little bit for each whip stitch because we want to make sure that we don't have any of the fabric poking through. I'm just going to do a tiny one next to it on the other side before we go too far. So these are just some seed stitches. Some fabric getting caught and then we're going to do our whip stitch so we're going to come up and we're going to do basically the whip stitch is a back stitch and then we make it like super fancy so we go in come up and then go back in where we came in before now we're going to come back up right at the start and then we're going to go underneath the first back stitch. And then we're going to go underneath the second back stitch. And then come down through the fabric. And that's our little whip stitch. So again, this is four strands of DMC thread. I'm going to do two again for this one because it's a tiny little area. And then as soon as we start like getting into the middle, we can do like three or four wraps. So we go under the stitch, not through the fabric, under the stitch. And now we want to go through the fabric. And there's a tiny little whip stitch. So 
if you need me to slow down, let me know. I did say at the start, but I'll say it again now. Um, I do have a hard finish that I need to adhere to, which is 245. Because I double booked myself. Because Wednesdays are my crazy days. And I made this crazy day even crazier. And I'd really like to get this done today. It'd be awesome to see it completed and not be a, a doofus and uh, have to go back on my word of, of it being a three-day project. Okay, so that was three. I'm still going to come up at the very start of this, of this line. We don't like come up in the middle or anything like that. Try not, the trickiest part of it, and it's not usual with this stitch, it's just because of the piece itself, is to not catch any of the previous stitches. Mm, this was a lot easier when I was holding it in hand. As usual. If you have any questions, let me know. But this just gives it a um a similar look to the stem stitch so that it looks like it's yarn. Oh, and don't forget to let your, your needle hang so that it unwinds. It's not really a fine science of how many back stitch stitches to do for each whip stitch. Just whatever you're comfortable with. It is a chunkyish looking stitch. So it will like fill up pretty quick. Oh, sorry sticking my arm in the way. So if you want it to look relatively flat, you do want to kind of adhere to the, the lines a bit within the little ball that you've made. So I'm going to do one more after this and then jump to over here. I'm not going to carry it. I'm not going to continue doing it along this part here. Yeah, I've caught it over here, so just be careful for that kind of thing. Alright, so one more. I'm only going to do two on this one.
So that's one little, probably a quarter of our little yarn ball. I don't have much thread, so I'm actually going to just trim it. Some little tiny ones too. All right, we'll grab some more floss. only three strands. That's only three as well. Let's just take one of those ones out because it's a really long pull. So I'm going to do a loop start. If you don't know what a loop start is, let's find out. So we've got two strands. You can see the two there. I'm going to put just the end of them both on my needle and then I'm going to grab both ends, just neaten it up a bit, both ends, put them together and then that's, well that's not a loop start actually, that's, that's just doubling up our thread basically. So I've got a decent amount of length there. And then tie it in a knot. And that means you've got no tail, so you can't accidentally unthread your needle. Sorry, that's not a loop start, that's a cross stitch term. Loop start something else. Anyway, let's keep going with this. fabric bothering me. I'm just going to trim it off. Can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, this one's just going to be too.
So now I'm going to do um, this little area here, and that one goes in this direction. Oops, not that far. I make a ball, don't we? Please go under. There we go. <laughs> you can just push it over so it sits in the right spot. Someone's on my website. Sorry for the notification sounds. Apparently I didn't put my phone on silent. Hopefully this makes sense and that you don't mind that I'm a bit quiet today. It's easy but it's just fiddly. Or knotted on the back because I haven't let it unwind for a while. Just grabbed another needle and do the knot.
I'm just going to do a couple of seed stitches with this last little bit, like I did with the other corner. Alright. I don't have much thread, so I'm just going to re-thread my needle. I have a very itchy nose at the moment. bits of purple thread all over the place. Okay. Just thread on my needle. I'm going to do my knot. I'm just going to fill in this little corner first and then I'll do the big area. So it is kind of tempting to just do seed stitches here, but I do recommend that you actually do like a single whip stitch because otherwise it's not going to be the same thickness. You can do little seed stitches in the corner that shows depth. I'm going to do my seed stitches now. And just one more. Alright, now we're going to do the big front bit. I'm going to go this way, I think. Yeah. So you want to do the ones on the edges kind of as close to the previous stitches as possible so that it covers up any like wobbly lines that you may or may not have done. I'm actually going to start back down here because I haven't noted a direction yet for this bit. And then I'm going to 
come back on the side of this end. I feel like this is a race o'clock with the clock a little bit. Four. just to break up the pattern a little bit Hopefully your little ball of yarn is looking cute too. I don't have much thread left. That's going to be two more. No, I'm not going to have enough thread for two more, unfortunately. This somehow thickens up drastically and I whip it. It's okay, I've still got more thread, just not on the needle right now. Dang phone's in the way. Can't see what I'm doing properly. Alright. Unfortunately, I don't have enough thread on my needle. So let's quickly rectify that and then we will frame it. You know, hope. It'll be all done. Nice, easy little embroidery. Almost filled it up.
to three just because it's going to be tricky to to whip it with all this thread in the way And that's our piece. Isn't it cute? Okay. So that's the whip stitch. I'm going to take it out of my hoop holder thingy. And move that out of the way. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to frame it in our hoop. We still got... Oh, having it close. Shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. I'm just tying off my thread again. And just for a little bit of splash of color, I'm going to do it in the green that I did here. So we can get rid of our needle minder. So we don't need that now. And all my bits of purple that I need to organize can go over there. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is first you will want to wash it. I'm going to cheat and um, spritz it with water or use my little pen so I can go just like this around the edges. Like I said yes the other day, this is basically just filled with water. It's the eraser end. Anyway, I'll do that later. You get the idea. You want to wash it. You want to press it if it dries really wrinkly. But the main thing is that you want it super tight. You want to get it in your hoop the way you want it to. I set it up exactly how I wanted it to when I put it in the hoop. And then we want to get some fabric scissors. These are my good ones. Okay, here are my fabric scissors. And we want to trim off some of these little tails. So they don't get in the way. There's only about one. That's all right. And then we want to just cut about however long that is. I need to get my ruler because I'm bad at inches. Um, about half an inch, maybe a bit more. Yeah, like three eighths of an inch, which is yeah, like two centimeters. And just cut it around in a circle. This doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be the best. No one, no one but you really is going to look at the back of this. So we got a rough circle, we're going to get our floss, that's not enough floss, anyway I want six strands and I want it to be at least one and a half length of the hoop, like the circumference of the hoop. I'm going to thread my needle with all of that floss. I 
I like to start at the top where the, the little screw is. But we want to tie our needle, not in our needle, uh, not in our thread. Oh my gosh, I can't do words today. And then just do what's called a running stitch. So we just go up, down, and up. And it's like a, it's like half of a back stitch. So if the only difference if you want to make the back of this super pretty is when you put it back into your hoop, you want to have a second piece of fabric underneath it um, and trim that as well. I like to trim it so that it's taut with the hoop so that you don't see it when you fold when we fold this over. Um, but each to their own. And that just that just hides the back of your work, basically. There's no point to it. Make sure you're getting both pieces of fabric. If you did do what I suggested on Monday and used at least two pieces of fabric so that it doesn't see through. And you can already see what it's trying to do. calling me. What's up, Charlie? What? I know we gotta go soon. In a sec. And then we just pull it through. You wanna tie a knot in it? I'm not gonna do that because I'm in a rush. Yeah. Thank you for contributing. But that's our piece. I want the camera. Well, I'm not using that camera right now. So don't touch, don't touch. And then, yeah, that's, we just pull it tight. We don't want to pull too tight or else you'll actually rip the fabric. Um, but you want to do it tight enough that it sits as flat as possible. Um, but that's our finished piece. Hooray! Yeah. Do you want to say hi? No? Okay, that's fine. There we go. <laughs> but yay! That's our finished piece. It's all done in our hoop. All four stitches. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> um. Can you say yay? <laughs> what camera? What happened? I'm using it. Um. Thank you so much for joining in. If you have, I do have to run. I'm really sorry to not do a bit of a better send off. Um, if you bought the pattern, you will probably see a, a feedback form that'll come through in your email in the next couple of days. Um, if you're watching this uh, from a pre-recorded thing, thank you so much for watching it after the fact. Um, yeah. I have
have to dash. Thank you so much. And I look forward to doing the next chillong with you all. Bye.